Greetings, chess players. My name is Chris Torres, and this is my daily chess musing for January 7th, 2021. Happy birthday to Paul Carries, who was born on January 7th, 1916. From 1935, when he debuted as a sensational 19-year-old at the 6th World Chess Olympiad in Warsaw, Paul Carries was one of the top five players in the world before his untimely death from a heart attack on an international airplane flight from Vancouver to Helsinki in 1975. Perhaps his greatest achievement came at the age of 22 when he won one of the most powerful tournaments ever held, the AVRO 1938, a double round-robin tournament to decide Alexander Alekhine's challenger for the World Championship. The result granted Carries the right to play a World Chess Championship match with Alekhine, a match that Carries almost certainly would have won. But World War II intervened, and the match was never played. For a few years after the war, I believe that Carries was the strongest chess player alive, but unfortunately, he was never granted another opportunity to play for the title of World Champion. Here is a famous position that occurred in 1955 during round four of the Gothenburg Interzonal in which Paul Carries was paired against Boris Spassky. Spassky, who had the black pieces, had just played 29, knight 6 to d7. Can you spot Paul Carries' knockout move? So as I said, Boris Spassky has just played knight 6 to d7. Can you spot the move that Paul Carries played? I'll give you one minute. Did you find queen takes g7 check? If you did, congratulations. Carey sacrifices his queen to set up an elaborate windmill. Boris Spassky must accept the queen. In the actual game, he just resigns. But for explanation purposes, we'll go ahead and look at what happens after he takes. So king takes g7, and then Paul Carries has a nice discovered check from the bishop on b2. So he plays knight takes d7 check. King goes back to g8. Knight goes back to f6. Check. Just look at all those wonderful arrows. The black king is in check and must move, but there are really no good moves for the black king. So you could go to uh, f7, I suppose, but then there's another discovered check from the rook on f1. So the knight can go to d5 and say check, and the knight's attacking the queen on c7. King goes to g8, knight takes c7 would be a fork. Rook goes to c8, and then just to simplify things faster, rook takes f8, king takes f8, knight takes e6, check. And white is easily winning. So we see why Boris Spassky resigned right after Paul Carey's played his iconic queen sacrifice. Queen if you enjoyed today's Daily Chess Musing, be sure to check out the Daily Chess Musing's Facebook page, Follow me on Twitter at Tori's Chess, join our Daily Chess Musings Club on Chess.com, and peruse through all of our free lessons at DailyChessMusings.com. And with that, I bid you adieu until tomorrow. But before you go, please remember to hit the subscribe button.